guys, welcome to my YouTube channel and welcome to another episode of XC Shop Critique. Today I'm going to be doing a critique on the store called um, Kevis Collection. And if this is your first time visiting, my name is Nancy and I am a digital marketing specialist. On my channel, I post weekly videos on how to build a thriving business on Etsy. You will learn how to market your shop by utilizing best practices such as SEO, branding, social media, and much more. So if this is your first time, make sure to subscribe to the channel and make sure to leave a comment below to introduce yourself. So let's go ahead and get started on this tutorial. Okay, so here we go. So thank you. Um, creative um, collection for letting me do a critique on your shop. Um, I believe the shop owner is named Kavita. So thank you for letting me do a review and let's go ahead and get started. So the listing that I picked for a review is this one here. The first thing I normally talk about on a review is the photo and that's because the photo is the number one most important thing in your shop when it comes to grabbing someone's attention and when it comes to someone wanting the product. Now, before I talk about the photo, I do wanna address something that I saw in your store. Um, normally don't do this unless I'm 100% sure, I could be wrong. However, I did wanna mention that when you are using um, pictures of stuff like this, like Rugrats, or if you, I believe you had like Superman, and other characters from other movies, Boss Baby, unless you have full rights to use these images for stuff that you're gonna make money from, you shouldn't do it. Your store will get shut down eventually because someone is gonna either report it or even the same manufacturers of Barbie or the same manufacturer of Rugrats is gonna report your shop. And therefore, once you get a couple infringements in your store, you have the risk of getting your store shut down. I recommend just using artwork that you could buy and you could use commercially. Now, if you have the right to sell these type of artwork and you have a license to sell it or an agreement with those companies, disregard what I'm saying. However, if you don't, I wouldn't recommend using anything Disney or anything that's not yours for infringement and illegal rights, um, you could definitely get into a lot of trouble doing that. Um, you could go to the website called USPTO.gov and you could check trademarks. As you can see, Rugrats is trademark, um, is live also. So just keep that in mind that it's something very, very um, even if you see other people doing it, doesn't mean you should do it. I know that. Um, there's a lot of stores that sell Disney products or they sell stuff that they shouldn't sell and they still do. Um, I just want to give you a heads up um, because the last thing you want to do is put all this work and start creating some type of income to get your store shut down. So just want to put it out there so you can know. Um, so let's go ahead and start the, the critique. So the first thing is the photo. The photo is what makes the person buy from you. And it's what is compelling for them. So maybe they were searching for um, this actual product. Maybe they weren't. But when they saw it, they were like, oh, I want that product. So you want to make sure that your photo, one, doesn't have anything distracting. I feel like the background is a little bit distracting. Um, two, you want to make sure that your picture is cropped like in a complimentary way. I don't know if this is supposed to be here. Um, if I was to zoom in. You can see that is getting cut off right here and right here. So that makes the photo um, not look as pleasant as it should be. Her face is getting cut off. The name is getting cut off. So I would definitely work on doing this whole picture again. Um, so it could look really, really good. And this one looks better, obviously, because it's a full picture. Here you were trying to imitate a potato bag. What I would do is if you go to, I have all these links below on this video. If you go to creativemarket.com 
you're able to buy mock-ups for any type of items so you simply um, we just go to creative market and you could actually find mock-ups for different things and that's going to make your picture look more professional right now it doesn't look that great um so i will definitely change it but if you were to go here um let's see if they have any of for potato chips so we could check right now so this is not like really helping right now so you might have to go in here and kind of play with it but let's see if they have anything else so this is where you would go and they have mackles for different things so this one right here has a variety they have um tupperware they have boxes so you're gonna have to just come kind of go through them and kind of see which one this one's for like a cookie, but that doesn't go with what you're selling. This is a, a pouch mock-up, a coffee mock-up. So you're going to have to kind of go through these. They have ice cream mock-up. So here's one, potato chip bag. This is the one you want. So you will buy this, and then you're able to put the photo on top of this. And it's going to make it's gonna make your photo look so much better than you doing it yourself. And it's like a little cutoff right here. You see how that? It doesn't look that great so I will definitely change that also when you your photo shouldn't have any distraction and your photo right now does have distraction but the background you have like a fence on the background I will remove that um, you should just put the potato strip by itself with nothing additional so it should just be the potato strip if you want to showcase the front and back that's fine um, another thing to keep in mind if you ever want to be feature on Xe some they'll go and pick listings that they feel like have amazing photos, have amazing listing description. It meets all the criteria, like they have their policy filled out, their about me section, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And um, when you have your logo on top of it, um, they won't pick your photo. So if you ever want to be featured from XE, I will remove your logo. Um, also you see you see here how you have the word um, I guess is um printable theme chip bag and then you have it down here again you shouldn't have it twice and then you have digital download here and you have an error pointing that way um i would just remove the digital download from here i don't think you need to have both chip bag up here and down here as well so i will remove that and i will definitely remove your logo also because it's a little distracting it's right on top of the photo um it's, it's hard to understand if if the logo goes with the chip because it's almost like similar colors, so it's very distracting. Um, so definitely just have a, a regular photo, white background with the potato chip, and if you want to put in the bottom of that a, a caption, you can. I would just do the photo simple as it is. And then maybe the second photo, you could have like, you know, printable ship bag and so on. So I would definitely work on your photos. They do need uh, work. I wouldn't do watermark like this if you scare somebody stealing um what i would do is just lower the resolution of the photo because this is confusing um it doesn't make the picture look attractive so for a lot of people um that don't know that this is a watermark might think that that comes with the photo believe it or not so definitely we'll remove that as well um you want to make sure that your photo is um beautiful it's amazing when they look at it whether they were looking for the item or not, they're like, oh, wow, I want to get the item for the next party. It's so cool. And then, you know, they want to go ahead and buy from you. So that's the first thing I would do is, is to work on your image um, and changing the image around, especially the first image is um, it's not as pleasant, as nice as it should be. So the second thing that we that I normally talk about is SEO. As you might know, it's also known as search engine optimization. And what I do to do my research is I use Xe Rank, and that's a free tool for any Xe seller to do keyword research and to do competition research and so many more things. Um, I will leave the link below. Like I said earlier, anything that I talk about or resources, they all are going to be on the bottom link. Now, with your SEO, um, you want to make sure that you use keywords that people, it's not oversaturated and that it, it describes your item that you're selling. So we're gonna talk about that today. So looking at this actual listing here, when I go to rank, XE rank, um, this, these are your keywords right here. 
And you see how some of these keywords don't have numbers right here? So this one says there's 2,000 people using regrets. And then there's like 10,000 people using chip bags and chip bag 11,000. And you see how all of these here don't have data. So two things. One, um, like I mentioned earlier, you want to make sure that you don't use something that is copyright. Two, these, the reason why these don't have any number next to it is because when a keyword is in very low demand, that means that not really anyone is looking for that particular item, um, there's no data to report back. And that's why. So if you ever use XE rank and you start looking for keywords, right, and you see that there's no information on them, what I highly recommend is that you don't use those keywords. That means that not too many people are, are looking for those keywords. So you don't want to use keywords that are oversaturated, which means that too many people are using, like this one here. See, this is oversaturated. 50,000 people are using it. So you're not going to be found. Plus, this is uh, too broad. A digital download could be pretty much anything. It could be what you sell. It could be a picture, it could be a wedding sign, it could be table numbers, it could be pretty much anything. So therefore, you're just targeting anybody and everybody. But then on top of that, because it's such a broad keyword, you're not going to get found using this keyword. These keywords here are kind of the opposite. No one's really looking for, for these type of keywords. So therefore, you're not generating traffic. So when you do SEO, it could kind of work on both hands. You could use a keyword that's oversaturated, or you could use a keyword that no one's looking for. So you kind of have to meet the middle ground that you want to use a keyword that people are searching. There's a demand, but the competition is low. That's the key. So there's a demand for that particular keyword, but the competition has to be low. If the demand is high and the competition is high, it's going to be very hard for you to rank organically, and it's going to be hard for you to rank even if you were to spend money on ads. So that's the fine balance between both of them that you have to get. Um, I would definitely go back and do your research. I would change these, all of these here, is especially this one. And even these that are under a thousand, I would change the very, very low. Um, the only good part about this keyword that it does describe um, to the T what you're selling. However, all of these need to be changed. You just need to find um, another keyword that's going to work for you better. Um, definitely sit down, um, do the work. I know it's going to be like very tedious. You're going to have to find, um, you're going to have to describe the item. So whenever you're doing keyword research on XE rank, you're going to have to describe what exactly you sell. Um, that way you could find that item. You don't want to use two keywords that are too broad because then you're going to just find keywords that are, um, not targeted towards your audience. So therefore, you might increase in impressions and views. However, your sales will be will remain the same or even be less. So that's why sometimes you hear people say, I don't understand why I'm not getting the sales because I get a lot of impressions, but no one's buying. It's because a majority of the time, the person is targeting the wrong person or the wrong audience. And that's the reason why. Once you do your keyword search and you got all the new keywords, um, for XCO best practices, um, for XC now, it's a little bit different than it used to be. So before, it was just how you have it now. You would stuff all the keywords in the title and then, you know, you would use the keywords in the listing description, which you still do. However, now what they want you to do is use the main keyword in the title and just put a simple easy to read, easy to understand title. So you don't want to stuff it with keywords. Maybe you want to put printable Rugrats chip bags for your next party or occasion. This is a digital download. And that's it. Something simple to those terms. Um, they want to make it very simplistic. So you're meeting both criteria. You're meeting the criteria of the search engine, which they need the keyword. And then you're also meeting the criteria for the visual aspect. So when a customer is shopping, they understand exactly what they're buying and they and there will be no confusion from their end of what they're buying. So you're meeting both criteria, and that's why they changed it. Um, it doesn't mean that how you have it now is wrong. It's just that XC um, changed it 
for that for that method of putting one keyword and making it very simplistic that way it's easier for people to understand what exactly they're buying so the third thing is your listing description so keep in mind that your photo is what made them click on your item your um your seo is how they found your shop right that's how they found the actual listing that you're selling and the listing description is how they buy from you is how they they're going to go ahead and purchase from you i think you've done a really good job in the sense of putting uh, headlines and separating them to make it more readable, um, readable and for people to understand um, what they're buying. So I do um, like that. I like the fact that you have um, that there's no refund on instant downloads. Um, so that's really good because you've been, you've been very transparent and it's very important, especially with digital downloads. Um, it's cool that you have matching items and you have a link. I will put the matching items maybe a little bit more in the top there are people that wouldn't read this whole listing description and because it's a little bit longer um, they wouldn't necessarily go all the way down I know that you have here um, that you know for copyright information you know that the graphics are only are, are only provided for personal but it's almost like um, if you have a license, then you're fine. But if you don't have a license to sell this, you suck like a double standard because you're putting here that no one else could use it, but you're doing the same thing. So once again, just keep that in mind. The only reason why I bring it up so much is because when I first started my Etsy shop, I kind of ran through the same thing that I was using copyrighted, um, not images, but I was using quotes. And um, I did get a lot of like strikes against my shop because of it and I wouldn't want you to have your store closed because you're using um either images or quotes or favorite sayings that um you're not supposed to use so just want to give you a heads up on that but I, I do think that you did a really good job with your listing description the only suggestion I will have is probably um make it a little bit shorter or take off the how to assemble and then maybe send them when they download the Insta download, have a sheet sheet where you write this in there. That way they have it for themselves. I think that would be easier and then it would take some of this unnecessary, like so, so long, it will help you better probably. So that's what I would recommend. Um, and the last thing that I want to talk about is the curation of your shop. The curation of your shop is, um, do you have a logo? How does your shop look? Does it look like all the photos are cohesive, et cetera, et cetera. So for instance, I, I do think that your, your cover banner is a little busy. Um, what I would do is um, either pay somebody from, you could, you could hire someone and pay for like a banner for under $20. If you go to Fiverr, I have the link below. You could buy a banner through there. You kind of tell them what you want. You can even send them photos or documents of your files and they'll do it for you. But I highly recommend doing it because it is a, a little busy. You shouldn't have your logo three times. You have it here, you have it here, and you have it here. Shop owner, you should have your picture here and you should have your name here. Um, I do like your tagline. I thought that was really nice. We create unique uh, memories. I think that's really, really, really cute. Um, if you want to use your logo here, that's perfect. But up here should be your name. People want to know who they're buying from. They want to make an emotional connection. So I de definitely recommend um, going ahead and changing that. Um, your pictures, um, some of them do, do need work. This is another one that you could tell is, is getting cut off. Um, as you can see, it's getting cut off on the side. Um, sorry, my computer's a little slow. So here you go. You see how it's getting all cut off. It doesn't look like you took the time or maybe it's just the software that you use or something, but definitely we'll work on that and creating better photos. Because if you want to take your store to the next level, um, your photos have to be amazing. Um, they have to be amazing. If they're not, unfortunately, it will be very hard for you to to make the sales or the, the type of sales that you want. It seems like all your photos um, are not cropped, um, 
correctly. Some of these look distorted, like the water bottle. It looks a little distorted. The photo doesn't look as clear. Um, I don't know if it's just the photo. Maybe when you print it out, it comes out fine. But from viewing at first glance, it looks a little bit distorted. This one looks better. You see how this one, he's more up and like longer. And look at, this is the same photo. And look at how it looks like he's stretched out. You see his head? And here his head is longer. And then here it's like shorter. That's because the photo is distorting. And for quality, you know, to buy something like that and the photos distorted, I wouldn't buy that. So definitely have to work on your quality of presentation. And if that's the file that you're selling, because I, I could see that this is the file. You see how here it is, it's the same same way. Um, You want to make sure that whatever you sell, you know, you spend time on it, that you look at it. If you have to have someone else look at it and give you perspective on it and say, hey, does this look distorted or does it look different? And that takes time. Don't feel like, you know, I'm just saying that just to say that in the beginning when you're doing any type of software like Photoshop or you're learning all these softwares and you're learning how to do 20 million things, right? As an XC seller, um, these are not skills that we have. So we have to craft them get, and we get better and better and better. However, if you feel like it's really hard for you, just hire someone to do it for you because that's going to cost you a lot of time, a lot of energy, and most of all, it's going to cost you money because now you're putting work that's not quality. And you definitely want to take pride in doing a really good job if you want to make your store grow um, to the size that you want it to grow. Um, I will also recommend having a theme. That means having the same background, the same colors. That way, if I see this picture on Etsy and I saw this one, I know it's coming from the same shop. Right now, um, there's no branding. There's no theme color. It's just, it's all over the place. So therefore, you don't have a cohesive look. So you don't have a cohesive, you're not establishing yourself as a cohesive brand that when people see you um, anywhere, they recognize, um, oh, this is from that one store. So that's what you want to do. You want to make sure that you have a cohesive look. Um, that does come with timing, but what you could also do to expedite what a cohesive look looks like, you could look at other stores. You could look at stores that are very prominent, that make a lot of money, and you could kind of see what they're doing. So you could have a comparison, and then you could say, oh, okay, that's what they're doing. And then you could kind of have something to go buy. But you definitely need to work on that because... Um, if you want to have a brand and if you want to make this, let's say your full-time job and make a lot of money, this is part of it is having a cohesive look. Um, your reviews, I mean, you're doing a good job with the four reviews that you had. I mean, you did really good. Um, I do, you know, you did a about me section, which is really good. A lot of people don't take time to do the about me section. What I would do in the about me section, I would include photos of yourself or maybe you working um, when you're creating these products only so people could see. Um, a lot of people might not read your about me section, but other people do actually read it. So it's just a nice way to connect with the person. It builds credibility. It lets, it lets them know who you are. Um, some people do want to connect. So it's just a nice way of adding those things to your store in order to make you stand out from other stores that are not doing it. Um, I do like the fact that you have your links of social media linked. So that's important to do. So other than that, th th these are my suggestions. I'm going to go ahead and look at your um, links, your social media links, and give you some feedback really quick. So this is your Twitter page. What I would recommend is redoing your, your cover. Um, keep in mind that if this is your cover, you should have this all across. So like your Twitter should have the same cover. Your LinkedIn should have the same cover. Your Facebook has, should have the same color, cover. And that's just being branding 101 is keeping it the same way. That way people know who they're buying from. And it's very, very crucial and very important for you to, to have that. Um, if you don't, it does affect um, the way that your, your brand looks basically. So you want to make sure that it's all across. Um, the photo also is very um, distorted, so therefore it doesn't look professional. Um, 
So it, it's a beautiful photo. It's just that the photo is distorted. If it wasn't distorted, it would look so much better. So definitely I would change that. Good job in putting your your logo here. It looks like it's a little bit cut off, I believe. Um, so just working on sizing it correctly. That way it doesn't get cut off. Um, I do see that you post in a consistent. Um, what I would do is I would always add a photo because um, the pictures that get the most click through are the ones that have photos. So right now, I don't know if you have it connected to your Instagram. So every time you're posting on Instagram, it's automatically posting here. I really don't care for that if you do have it that way. I, I don't use it that way for my company. And that's because a lot of times the photo doesn't come up or your hashtags that you use on Instagram pop up on Twitter. And Twitter, it's not like Instagram. Every platform have their own little you know, differences. So you want to make sure you adjust the photo for that platform. So a picture on Instagram wouldn't fit a picture on Twitter. A picture on Twitter wouldn't be the same size as a picture on Pinterest. And these are things that you have to learn is optimizing the photo accordingly to the social media that you're currently using because every social media platform is a little bit different. So I would definitely work on a banner and I would definitely work on removing the auto auto tweets. And then also when you tweet on, on Twitter, not having so many hashtags, one or two is sufficient. Um, on Instagram, you want to have more, but on Twitter, just one or two would be enough. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So this is your Instagram. Good job on putting the, also the logo. I would also make sure it's not getting cut off, um, resize it, that it doesn't look blurry. So I will work on that. Um, your about me should be a little bit clearer. I will remove all these, it's too many hashtags. And I will also make sure that you explain the three W's, who you are, what you do, and what you sell. Um, you do have, you know, we create personal gifts. Um, and then you have your Etsy shop. So you should have like a call to action um, on your bio. Um, but good job of at least filling out the the bio. A lot of people don't do it. So at least you're trying from your end to kind of have something in there. Um, oh, so cute. So on your Instagram, it's the same thing. Um, you want to make sure that your photos are, are cropped, are cut or, or, you know, cut in a complimentary way. You don't want them to be um, cutting off on the photo. And I know that with Instagram, you have to keep in mind it's 1080 by 1080 pixels. So I know if I click on it, you see how I can see the whole thing. You want to make sure this picture is adjusted that when I'm looking at your feed, it doesn't get cut off. Um, because a lot of people don't click on the photo. They just look at your feed and the nicer your feed and the prettier it looks and the more organized it looks and the more cohesive it looks, the more followers you get. Also, with every photo that you put, you want to make sure that you include a caption, um, a call to action, and you separate your hashtags from your keywords up here. So, for instance, so if you put this as a caption, at the end you should say, click on bio link to learn more. Click on bio link um, to order yours today. That's what you need to do. It's a call to action, telling people what to do. A lot of people don't realize that if they click on the bio link, it takes them to your Etsy shop. So you got to treat this as if people didn't know. A lot of people, majority of people are still, are still fairly new with um, Instagram. So they don't really understand that they could actually click on it and head over to your Etsy shop. So you have to make sure that you let them know um, by providing clear instructions and just telling them. And then what I would do is separate your caption from your hashtags. I have that on my store. I'll show you right now. If the internet ever changes. So this is my shop. So as you can see, when I have a photo, right? Sorry, it's a little slow. I have the caption up here. Then I have da da da, And then I have the hashtags on the bottom. This is a good way to separate it. That way it doesn't look congested. People could read it. Um, it's easy to read and they understand exactly um, what I'm selling or what I'm talking about. And then as you can see also in the photo, um, I put click bio link to watch full video. So it's just letting them know what to do. I'm adding a call to action and that really does help with 
um, increasing, right, um, your opportunity of selling someone one of your items. Um, so let's go ahead to the next one. The same thing with Facebook. Make sure that your banner is the same all across. Um, you do have your logo on this one, and it's not getting cut off, so that's good. Um, it seems like you posted this from May 31st. You pinned it, and it's still pinned. Good job of putting a photo an hour ago. Um, also, keep in mind that with Facebook, you don't need all these hashtags. Um, as you can see, uh, Facebook is a little bit different than Instagram. Instagram, you could use up to 30 uh, even those recommended to use, um, you know, 11 or 12. That's what Instagram recommends. However, on Facebook, you don't need all this. It looks like spam. I would definitely we we work on doing your postings. So what I would do is one, remove all the hashtags. Two, write a nice caption. Do a call to action. Put the link and call it a day. I wouldn't do all this stuff right here. If you want to promote um, your Twitter, your Instagram, then you add it right here. Like you have the Instagram feed right here. You could add Twitter up here. You could add Pinterest up here. That's what I would do. I wouldn't do this. It looks um, very spammy. It doesn't look attractive. Um, as you can see, you have all the hashtags and no engagement. And the reason is because Facebook doesn't work that way. Unfortunately, it, um, Instagram is easier to get a little bit more engagement. So I would definitely work on removing that. Um, because it just looks spammy. Um, but yeah, these are my suggestions for your shop. I think that you have, um, beautiful ideas. You just have to, um, market them a little bit better, making sure that your photos are not, um, stretched out, that they're not distorted, that your mockups are nice and clear, um, that your SEO is done correctly, that you're making sure that, Whatever you use in in your shop is not copyrighted, so you don't get in trouble. So just making sure that you follow those steps. I hope that this tutorial was helpful. If you guys learn anything new or have any suggestions for this shop that I didn't mention or that I didn't talk about, guys, we're, we're trying to help you know each other out regardless of the situation. We have enough room for everyone to be successful. So if you have any tips, on how to improve or anything that I didn't mention, please leave a comment below um, just because I'm trying to create a sense of community so we could all come together and help each other out. Well, thank you guys for watching and you guys have a wonderful day.